Hello, everybody, again. So we are recording. This is going to be more about if you're dealing with denser tissue types, which with these athletes, obviously, you are. They're going to have larger muscle mass, and some guys are going to be more literally thick and dense than others. So this is going to be a demo. She's created a body out of pillows here. So enjoy. <laughs> so head, thorax, arms, glutes, uh, legs. Um, each of these areas has a little bit different density. So how much force we're going to deliver and how we're going to do that is going to vary with that. So the glute area right here, that's going to have the most dense tissue. So the more dense the tissue, uh, the more force you're going to need for the um, pressure to stimulate down through, but you've got to be careful that you stay with a broad base. So if I press here, have my feet twisted around. If I come in here with a broad base, I can get a lot of change. But if I come in narrow, not a whole lot happens. A lot moves with the broad base, narrow, I don't get that. So we want to stay, the more dense the tissue, the broader base the contact. Here, these bolsters, don't have the same density as this pillow right here. So we want to use our forearm first, but you can see how much more effect I have. If I use a more narrow base, I'm concentrating all that change just into that one area, as opposed to lots of shift along the path. On the thorax, let's remove this person's arm. On the thorax, we've got a lot of um, ribs and where the tissue thickness diminishes. And then we have the area right along the spine on either side where we have the erector spinae that is used um, for stability along that spinal column. And so we want to make sure that when we're coming in with our pressure, you were using this kind of pressure here to manage this density. And then we start to come up, we've got to change or I'm going to go poking right through on that. And you don't want to do that. So you have to, to lighten up in order for them to feel the same. Now, how do I do that? I do that by putting a little bit more pressure on my front foot. That's how I lighten it up. So lots of pressure into my back foot, hardly any on my front foot. But as I go into tissue that's less dense, I still want a broad base of a compression but I'm going to put a little bit more weight on the front foot and the back foot so that some of that load is down on my feet as opposed to it all coming up here under the thorax. The other area then that people um, do want pressure on, and we have to be aware of that, is right, I took the person's head off right here along the, the erector spinae. So the spinous processor running right up through here. This is an area that you want to come down at a 90 degree in. You have to work, a, have a little bit more effort to get this. So what you do is right on that edge, the lateral edge of that strip of the erector spinae, just put your little edge of your um, elbow right there and then just let it flop across. These are spinous processes here. Then I'm going to lean over it a little bit, still put my weight into my back foot, but I'm coming down so I'm getting a sharper angle at it and then moving up. And that allows you to get that pressure into that one area along 
the mid back that people oftentimes feel like they need more focus on. So the density of the tissue is going to determine how much force you're going to use. It also may determine whether you use your forearm or a flat hand. Uh, areas that are smaller, you can get by with the flat hand here. One last thing for this that I want you to be aware of is that look at how my my wrist is down and my thumb is turned down. This puts me on a very fleshy part of my arm. If I turn my thumb up, now I'm on a very bony part of my arm. So I see people do this. Start, and then they turn up. This is gonna be flatter, feel less intense, less pokey than this. So you got to keep that arm with the palm facing down and not let it just naturally roll up like that. The other thing is kneading. Um, and so I'm going to let Luke come up in here and I'll hold one of these dense tissues around and he'll show you some of the methods for kneading. So to reinforce some of those points that she was indicating, especially in getting that strip of erector spinae, a tactic I've used, especially if you're trying to get more comfortable using a forearm, take your hand, place where you want the concentration of your pressure to be. So let's say about three or four inches of my forearm is where I'm mostly applying most of my pressure. I put my palm right there, I put my elbow down, get set, remove my hand, and then I know I'm pushing right where I want to be. So that helps me place my forearm more efficiently. Um, another one too, with just getting more pressure into various uh, tissue types, don't get yourself twisted by trying to get this arm out of the way. Let yourself, let this arm come forward. And I can even use that at times as a counter pressure. I can kind of hold on to their body. So imagine this is a, their, their back. I can apply pressure on one side of their back, hold on to the other side of their body, and let that kind of help push them right into me. Now with the kneading, that actually starts to create, because all we're doing is trying to twist the tissue. With a glide, I'm trying to essentially lengthen the tissue by creating some kind of a tension force. I'm elongating and lengthening this tissue by gliding across it and essentially stretching it. Versus a need, we want to create a torsion, some kind of twist. However that twist is accomplished, there are a few ways. I can use my body to create that twist, which means on the biomechanics section, there's going to be a push piece of this, and then a pull. Don't get too caught up. This is where people tend to hurt their wrists and their elbows a lot by trying to do a lot of this all at the same time. Really want to, people want to need you know, dough. And we have to deliver more force here, especially with athletes, than anywhere else. So it, you have to be, chop it up. Push, create a push, just like you would use a compression or start a glide, then pin. Think, I tend to think push, pin, this is just gonna pin and hold that tissue, just holding them down, and then this hand now comes over and pull. Push. Now the push hand pins the tissue, and then I pull. So push, pin, pull. I can switch my feet. Push, pin, pull. I can even do that with a forearm. Push, pin, pull. Push, pin, pull. Be aware this table is a little low for me, so I'm having to lean forward. I even, if I had um, a joint, let's say this is somebody's hamstring, let's cut this in half. This is their hamstring, this is their calf, so here's the knee joint, right? I could push and use their body to create that twist. I could be uh, working in the glutes and hip area and be moving the hip and creating that twist 
under my push slash pin hand. We're just trying to usually create a tension force in the tissue and then a torsion force. So glides turning into means. So I hope that helps. Okay, we'll see how these go and uh, wait for some feedback from y'all. Uh, we've had an audience. Two of you get your little faces in here real quick. <laughs> it's Erica and Sarah. They're part of our Detroit Pistons team. So they are doing what you're doing and they have for quite a few years. So we're going to hope these recordings came out so that they make, that they're helpful for you. And if they are, we'll do some more.